We know it wouldn't be the internet if we weren't making reaction videos, and tonight I've got a special treat for you because not only am I making a Schooly bus build reaction video, but I've got one that features three different takes on the same build, and my friend Brianna from Wolfdog Buses is joining me so that we can really tear these to shreds. Is that our goal or what? Oh man, hard, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I give us license to be cruel tonight, mostly because this is a video hosted by Architectural Digest. And architects are among some of the most worthy targets of our critique because they feature incredibly large egos. So it's fun to knock them down a notch, am I right? That's a personal belief. So tonight, I'm looking at a video, I've never seen it. I know you haven't seen it. You didn't even know what the topic was until you saw the title of the video. This was sent to me uh, by a friend of mine named Cade, who I met at my very first job making coffee when I was 16 years old. And he has gone on to become a very, like honestly a very talented interior designer who is renovating spaces in Cincinnati, Ohio. And he sent this to me and said, I would love to hear your take on this video. And I took all my willpower not to watch it. And I saved it for tonight and we're gonna watch it together and you get to see us react to three interior designers converting the same school bus. I don't even know how that works. Yeah, I'm interested. Is it just gonna be drawings? Have any of them built a rig before? <laughs> Definitely not a rig, maybe a unit. Maybe a unit. Anyway, we're gonna get started. This is a fun one. I like uh, I like picking on professionals. You know? I'm gonna roll up my sleeves. Ooh, dirty work. Yeah, getting ready for some dirty work. Okay. And cheers. <laughs> I'm excited. This is going to be good. Here we go. Uh, uh. These three interior designers have been given a photograph of an empty school bus. Oh, it's going to be drawn. They have drawing. free reign to design it in any way they please. My name is Joy. My design Did style those is... Humps? Those are huge. That's what I was just going to say. It's real humps are like <laughs> two feet tall. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Oh, and the only rules that we have are if we see something that we want to talk about, either of us can hit the space bar and stop it. <laughs> I didn't realize how much that would feel like hitting a buzzer, but I feel like I'm on a game. <laughs> it is like a buzzer. <laughs> All right. This is Joy. She's classic, relaxed, and comfortable. Classic, relaxed, and comfortable. I'm Darren Jett, and my design approach is crazy, sexy, cool. Hi, I'm Listen Nas, and my design style shit. is colorful, textural, and sometimes a little folksy. Honestly, I like her no style clients, so far. No budget, just blank space. My first impressions of this very empty school bus housing is I can't wait. I'm obsessed with schoolies. I'm really curious if they're just doing drawings and putting this into a bus, are they going to even consider like where sinks can actually be, where showers can be? Like there's a whole plumbing situation that really limits the buildability of a bus. I have a question for you. Yeah. Look at this picture and tell me if it looks real. It looks like the back of the bus wall is inverted inside out see the tail lights on the inside yeah and i'm looking at the <laughs> color like wait a wait a second these windows open those aren't windows this is ai oh uh duke renders they i guess made up oh. that would explain why those wheel humps are about 18 inches tall okay so there's already a lot wrong with this <laughs> that's fun this will be purely theoretical yeah, because what's this window in front of the uh, this yeah. door? And there's also like a hole above the door. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so we're going to move past that. Oh, yeah, and look at the bottom of the emergency exit. It's like six inches off the ground. Yeah. Yeah, you can see all the flashers and everything. <laughs> it's wild. Okay. Well, we're living in the land of make-believe. I was hoping it would be a build, but we'll see. Let's just see how bad their designs are, you know? I think they're amazing. I've actually designed a school bus RV conversion in the past. No I've never designed for a bus before. My challenge is really to convert this thing into some sort of living experience worthy of being on the road that's, you know, conducive to living. It's challenge. long, it's narrow. You have wheels back here that we have to work within. Yeah. Never had a space that was as big of a challenge. 
but if I'm having a bus, I want to make it something that is crazy, original, mm. never been done before. Let's go for it. I really want to create a beautiful, luxurious sort of home away from home with wheels so that you aren't embarrassed when you pull into Canyon Beach in Malibu. How I'm approaching... Who... <laughs> Oh. If I'm pulling into Canyon Beach or Malibu in my converted school bus, I'm not going to be embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think she's bringing a little bit of some prejudice into this. The space is, I want to be inside of a music video. I'm imagining like a rock star. It's like Beyonce in a uh -huh. bus on the Renaissance tour. My overall vision is this is going to be a school bus for people who are crafty, love decorative things, but also are like deeply practical. I want to do like a cuckoo mm. clock inspired school bus. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Flooring, this is a good topic. Starting with the floor, we this really want topic. the floor to go from the front of the bus all no. the way to the back no. and be the same. We're going to do a beautiful sort of <laughs> aqua color. Think like 1990s Prada, Jill Sander, sort of. All right, but how did he insulate it? How did he catch the floor? <laughs> is this floor floating or what? Is it floating floors? Oh floor my cabins? God, yeah. So many questions. This is all about design. <laughs> Uh, mm. And see, like, my thing is, I, I'm i not good at the, the, the design element. I'm probably better than average, but I don't feel like I'm that good at it. And Well, uh, I think you're decent at it, seeing your builds. Also, I think you're better than this guy, because he already hit a fatal flaw. Fatal flaw. <laughs> he went over <laughs> the steps for the door, so there's no oh entry door God. steps anymore. That's, a, that's like a four-foot drop out the front door. Yeah, car. that's, you know. Oh, I hate when that happens. This builds for gymnasts only. <laughs> this is fun this is so interesting this is like what the mainstream world thinks about school bus conversions it's not about how they look let's be honest you know i mean it, like it is about how they look but minty slightly built. grayish but very 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 pale minty, and it's gonna grayish, be something very, very that's pale. pretty indestructible What's we're going to be? do a simple epoxy finish oh, on the floor okay. it has a little bit of a sheen to it so it makes the space it feel bigger little, and also flat. easy to clean I mean, I know this isn't a build critique, but that floor looked a little not flat. A like the reflections, yeah. yeah. I think he could, I don't know who you're hiring or who your subs are, but. Just don't play marbles on the floor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like her approach the most. So let's see what she's floor, doing. I want to do like a naughty elder. In a home, I love a refined wood where there's not a they ton of knots. Naughty, Here in the like school bus, one, under. it saves funds. Two, it's just non-precious. No it helps. Way. You see that? What? The wheel humps just disappeared. <laughs> Whoa. That's wild. Now, if you do wood floors, you don't have to deal with. Wheel yeah, you just go over it. That's sick. I didn't know that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do wood floors in my bus. If you can just go over the wheel. Yeah, that's I mean, perfect. Look at it. I like her. Boards? Well, she's hiring better subs. Those are like wait, wait, wait. Okay, so this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's at least eight windows there. So it's so twenty foot. Those are twenty foot boards. Yeah, those are very long boards. Has anyone noticed how hard it is to count the windows on a school bus if you're like looking at an auction ad or like a Facebook marketplace listing? You're like, how long is this thing? You're like, that's not that many windows. And you start like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, 14 windows. And like, you know, when you look at it, it's like only. And you need to zoom and use your finger. Yeah. And you lose track. You're going to make fun of me for this that... twice in one day. <laughs> I do the same thing. I just think that's how you know you're a bus person is like, you know that it's a thing. It's Count button. windows. Can't, counting windows is hard. I love what she did with the wheel humps. Do hide stains because you're going to be in and out and with like gravel and dirt too. all over your shoes or your She's slippers, right whatever. I really like to create different areas and the Zone flooring theory. helps to designate lines between functions. Okay. Where are we the going? bedroom space is a modular mm. carpet tile cool, cool. that could be easily replaced if it's soiled or anything like that. Soiled. But in this living space, you'll see the flooring is just a pattern. It's interesting. So she chose to keep the wheel humps. Yeah. If it's about to get rid of wheel humps, ditch them, you know? <laughs> Those are like half of the wheel. God, it's a big wheel hump. That's like I how I draw a school bus for a kid. I actually do, if like the mosaic, that's like actually a mosaic tile. That's beautiful. That's very beautiful. It's not real, but it's beautiful. And, rug. and I love rugs. 
Okay, wall, ceilings, and windows. The walls are going to be the same color as the floor. No. And we're going to do a sort of plastic resin on right. the walls. Yeah. We would carry the same color from the walls up onto the ceiling as well. We just, we're in a, what happened? Now there's a round porthole in the roof? Okay. Where did we, in the, win the windows? I just, okay, okay. real quick, builder standpoint, how are you making this happen? Is this plastic? Well, yeah, he, he has a plan. He's an architect. Or is this like, did he get bubble wrap out of the Amazon box? You're supposed to throw that away. These? The recycle. Yeah, recycle. Plastic recycling is important. What is the I don't... Window deletes and then installs? A lot happened. A lot happened. This is amazing. Okay. I really like the work he's doing. Yeah. Amazing. So hard. Transforming. So where are we going? In a bus, this is something that is going to be very, very lightweight. You yeah. see it often in trains. You see it often in aircraft. And what I would like I, to do... I don't know when I saw a train or an aircraft that looked quite like that. Yeah. I, I know you yeah, what material it was, and I... That's cool. Totally forgot, but... Okay. Pillows on the wall. But what they would do is actually hold storage. You know, if you press we'll a button, it, it sure. could open up and you have a cabinet. We really want to think about the bus as having storage everywhere, mm -hmm. but we also want it to be rather discreet. Mm -hmm. I really want to think like about this as being a sort of jet set environment by having the windows sort of shaped almost like the inside of a plane. I think that could be very cool. And the windows could even have that same sort of screen integrated into it where you pull it down if you want some privacy. And if you want to know where you are, you pull it up and you can see outside. But what I want to do is to have one area of are. window You're that's only going always open. Miles and that would be a skylight. <laughs> I really wanted the palette to be very, very calm. There's texture to the oh, walls. I like that. And maybe we're doing like a raffia sort of feeling. So it's feeling like nature. But the focal point points are really just to enjoy that panoramic view and all of what's going on around you. The they, ceiling they clearly don't understand the pitfalls of keeping the stock bus windows. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so obvious. Jeez. Ugh, oh typical God. architect. I like what she's doing. Are you going to be able to watch the rest of this video if they keep the stock bus windows? Well, I don't know what just happened in the last bus because we went from stock bus windows to these like elongated like jet oh, windows. He clearly deleted the windows, raised the roof, <laughs> and added in new jumbo airline windows. It was an expensive build. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. He's got good help. That's for sure. <laughs> anyway, okay. I just, I do like what she's doing. I mean, her, I like it. You know, good vibe. I, you know. This bus was really incredibly important to me. And one of the things I really, really wanted to consider null and void is this solid ceiling. Yeah. So introducing Out a panoramic here. ceiling really gives us the opportunity to enjoy the sunsets, the sun rock. Who needs rollover protection, honestly? The structure. Oh you know what I'm saying? Like, who, I mean, who needs it? You can do it. Yeah, this is really cool. Like steel, you know, reinforce the whole. Well, like perimeter. Tesla's, you know, they're like all sunroof honestly if it's possible i want it that's sick <laughs> where's your solar panels going lady we can't power this bus <laughs> i do like what she's doing that's cool right love it in the summer in texas that would suck eggs i don't know could you way. imagine you would need i currently live in a house without a bedroom window so in in, in washington in the winter time but like if that if you drove your house and it was like that to Texas in August. Why would you drive your bus to Texas? Aren't buses for the mountains? Are you supposed to take them to ski slopes? Is that the purpose? We have a difference of opinion here. <laughs> How would you ever insulate that? Oh, you wouldn't. Right. That's the answer. Yeah. Okay. Well, wouldn't. Okay. It is cool. And really opening that space up. But it's a very thick glass plexi material glass that will plexi. support some weight to it. So we could put a ladder so you can walk up to the roof of the bus with a couple of little beach mm -hmm. chairs, hang out there and create your own um, little patio. Even though it's not a plane that actually has to be super light, the heavier your school bus, the more likely you are to just guzzle gas on the way around the country. Okay, wait, wait. This is the, the designer who just deleted the wheel humps, uh, no regard to it being a bus, but now she's considering the fuel economy. <laughs> what is it, a bus or not? Is it a bus or not? I don't think she's going to get a fuel economy without tires. You know, what's also interesting <laughs> is that if you look at the kinetic uh, energy equation, it's one half mv squared, where mass is just mass, but velocity is squared, you know? 
So when we're talking about the amount of energy it takes to move a bus at 55 miles an hour versus say 75 miles an hour, that's this, the difference in speed because it's squared is much more important than the difference in mass really. So <clears throat> she, sure. I, I think she's, um, so she's thinking about it. She's wrong, she's th she might be thinking wrong. about a little, the equation. little bit wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, her velocity is uh, zero, so it's null and void. Her velocity, I guess, the velocity of this bus is zero. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So I actually want everything to be light wood, okay. like pine and Douglas Doug fir. Bird. The reason I want to do wood everywhere on the ceiling and on the walls is because I can put paneling there and cool hide skylights. insulation inside. So you're in a metal tube. She talked about insulation. Driving around the country, you're going to get freezing ass cold at night or you're going to be sweltering hot. Okay. So insulation is key. And also you want to be able to dumb down some of the noise outside. I Go ahead, say it. I, well, she was my favorite from the beginning. Yeah, so definitely. Like She's got stairs in the door. And she, she got rid of the wheel hubs. <laughs> she got rid of the wheel hubs. <laughs> and she insulated. Her skylights are realistic. And uh, the round skylights are super cute. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm biased. I like her the best. So and she's got turquoise and a cool necklace. Yeah. All right. I very deliberately did not do anything with the windows themselves. So we need to be able to cover them up because you need privacy on a school bus. She's right about so that, even though she I'm going to do roller shades. So I'm going to use At this she's very amazing... Though. Pindler fabric, it is indoor outdoor using Sunbrella yarn. So it's actually like fade resistant, a solution dyed acrylic. Again, I'm not gonna change the windows here, but you can cut metal, especially in the ceiling. So I actually wanna do skylights all the way down the bus and they're gonna be dome bubble skylights. That curvature allows airflow to pass over them when you're going, you know, 65 whole miles per hour. Don't break the speed limit. They're going to be UV coated so they don't bleach everything inside the school bus. Okay. We're gonna put little shades so you can like close those off and have darkness when you need that. I just had to say, she sounds like the most technically savvy of yeah. the two in terms of considering the actual condition or of the three yeah can in terms of considering the actual conditions like if you have wood underneath a window mm -hmm. it will get bleached by the sun yeah and when you put three big skylights in the roof of your bus it's going to bleach stuff unless you have a uv coating on the skylights to prevent that from getting through i could be wrong but she seems like she's the youngest of the crew yeah and she is speaking with what seems like the most experience sounds like she might have a background in like engineering or something. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. All right. Layout. Oh, this we is have to awesome. address the layout of yeah, the we bus. Do. Let's put the bathroom in the back. You okay. know, we're going to hide the toilet back there. We're going to hide the sink back there. And we can also hide the shower back there. But we can oh, do something kind of cool where the shower is sort of a peekaboo moment to the rest of the space. <laughs> About the last quarter of that rounded shower. wall, that'll actually be a glass that's sort of tinted. You know, you can sort of see, but you can't fully see. And that's where you would have the shower just beyond that. Even though you're not... So, like, if I'm taking a shower and I'm, like, scrubbing my butt, like, do I want people to be able to just kind of see what I'm doing? Or, like... So, if we were going back, he wanted a sexy butt. Well, so nothing is sexier than watching I someone. <laughs> What's sexier than watching someone scrub their butt? You know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends on the person, but that's an interesting take. Just to you know, when you're living on this is a seven window bus, right? It was at least eight. Eight window bus, like it's really hard for that whole experience to be sexy if you're really living on there with someone else. There's like. There's, there's a compost toilet. Yeah. <laughs> there's like a and lot of not no sexy things happening. <laughs> there's, you need a white noise machine. Okay. Here we go. See it from the front of the bus. I put the bathroom and a small kitchenette at the very rear of the bus. Everyone Moving forward, we're going to have a sleeping area. My approach wait a, wait to a second. She wants the bathroom and the kitchenette in the back of the bus where the carpet is? You know, my grandma had carpet in her kitchen. Yeah, I had carpet in my kitchen when I was a kid. There was I also had carpet in my bathroom. Yeah. That was like from the 70s. Filling the water. wheel wells is to have storage units directly with, on yeah. top of them. So from a distance, they just look like three-quarter high storage units. But within the little sleeping alcove, we've got a day bed that's covered in a sumptuous mm. velvet. The main challenges of a school bus conversion are principally... I want to know more. What was up with that? Because um, uh, there was like 
Did you see that bed? Approach to concealing the Sorry. Oh, no. There is three windows behind that wheel hump. Yeah, I guess that's enough for a bed. Okay. Did I see what? Just bed. Yeah. This bed that come, pops in. It looks like a bed. Storage but units it's tiny. directly it's on top of them. So oh, from a, a distance, bed? they just look like so three quarter high bed? storage units. But within the little sleeping alcove, we've got a day bed oh, okay. that's covered in a sumptuous velvet. The main challenges okay. of a school okay. bus conversion okay. are principally that wheels at the back are huge. And well, you need to basically accommodate but a design that reconciles that the wheels full? have to be here. So what I want to do in order to make sure I'm that these wheels now. are accounted for, I'm going to give... But I like that she's accounting for, like... She did, she's doing it. This is cute. Okay, my thoughts now are that she did not delete the wheel humps, but rather they are describing their design to someone who is then editing the software. Well, yeah. So just yeah. a miscommunication. You know? Miscommunication. There's, yeah. there's still wheel humps. Um, that really changed my opinion about the wood floors. If the wood floors <laughs> are the next the wheel humps, then... <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's like if you do wood floors, it doesn't get rid of wheel humps. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. it's not magic. But she's the only one that's talked about them. Yeah. And that's cool. Oh, no, the other lady did, too, because she put the cabinets on top of the wheel home. Oh, right, right. Oh, them. No, you're right, yeah. Which is, I, I'm a big fan of that. I do that all the time. Hiding the wheel homes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking here, and I'm seeing um, the walls actually have been brought halfway up the windows. Yeah. Which is playing with fire, if you ask me. Because if one of those windows breaks, the only way to remove it is from the inside. No, I've only seen that once in my driveway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting there now. All right. She's doing a king size bed, which by I a king size bed I think would take up a little more space than that one. Your giant king size bed. I think it would, so luxurious, would right? It's going to be, less, gonna be raised up so that you can actually use the area under the bed like as that. storage. Yeah, I'm very I'm specifically you. going to hang on to the emergency rear exit. Yeah. This is super valuable as access to storage underneath. Hell and also yeah. while I'm like at this. it, I mean there's yeah. all this room at the back of the bus. I'm going to put bookcases above the rear door Do over the bed with yeah. a railing for all of your books and magazines. Then coming forward from there, the bed is really raised up. So I'm going to put stairs. So stairs are going to kind of cascade down off okay. of that king size bed. The stairs are also storage. Have you seen those beautiful mm -hmm. little stairs you pull the drawers out? I love it. I've seen those. I'm envisioning sort of a lot of people in the space at one time. Ooh, what I like, like is the idea nice of idea. the bed area. Mm -hmm and like the sort of seating area out. is being integrated yeah. together. What I also what like in a space making? like this is to always have a focal what, point. What so in this case, there? we're actually gonna have the bed be the center point. And the if bed. we're designing a bus for a okay, pop so that's star diva, let's have the bed be round. Yeah, Why not? Have we have these will wells actually, in the back and like what this. we're going to do is actually <laughs> have the children. bed <laughs> on top of one. So the circular bed is going to live on top of the right-hand wheel well, and the steps that go from oh, the main area of the, the bus wheel into the too, bathroom so are covering better. the one on the left. I started thinking about references from Betty and Francois Cotreau, their oh, apartment in yeah, Paris, apartment. Oh. and they have this sort of serpentine uh -huh. sofa I where it's sofa. one color on the seat and one color on Holy the front and back, moly. and that would be the Can sort of seating group in front think of about that all bed. Of the I really wanted the living space seats. to be the focal point of the bus. I like using furniture that's off the floor, that doesn't feel heavy, particularly in very narrow this spaces like to this, feel like a so they don't feel as afford. though everything has to be totally you know static in these beautiful CB2 <laughs> side chairs, which are wood frame with CB2? a beautiful washable velvet. Mm -hmm. So for well, anyone who might be concerned about, about the use CB2. of these lightweight I chairs, know. what I do then is I hook the back of the chair to the hook on the wall, and that eliminates any movement uh, throughout the bus. So like, I hear these kinds of ideas all the time in my life. Like, we're just gonna hook the chairs to the to the wall. And I'm like, with what hook? Yeah, you know? Hook. Make a little Yeah, make hook. a cute little hook. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna look bad. Like 99% of the time it's gonna look, just I'll find a cute little hook and I'm gonna hook the chairs to, and it's not gonna look good because you have not gone and looked for the hooks. You imagine a hook, I can imagine you wouldn't believe the hooks I can imagine. I can imagine the most beautiful hooks. They're discreet, maybe even recessed, brass. We can get more creative, man. I'm just so saying. So I've seen these chairs, and if they had the uh, stick legs on the rear, yeah. you could put uh, eye bolts of sorts. You could make them out of wood, <clears throat> whatever. Wooden eye bolts? Like, wooden, I don't know, like, can use. Basically, yeah, yeah, where you, you don't set know. The Nobody chair knows. Into Nobody something. Knows. 
Oh. It can even just be a pocket that comes out of the wall made out of wood, just a box without a top. And you put the legs into it because you're not going to want to crawl on the ground to hook something every time. But if you just no. set the chair rear your legs into something. In, in like a dock, if you will. Dock. Like a port. Just dock your chair. Well, a dock is not a hook. Now, if someone had said a dock, I would have had ideas. Oh, then you wouldn't have been so hostile. I'm it. big on language, you know. Be precise with what you want. I'm so sure she's a great a beautiful hook. I challenge her to spec the hook for that application. The coffee table that you see here is actually an antique design that was inspired by splendid antiques. And it's meant to elevate from coffee table height to dining height. We need to consider well, show all me sorts how. of flexible elements when you are in a space <laughs> that really can't be expanded very She's doing much. The so thing. the coffee table is the perfect opportunity to customize That's a good uh, one though, because if all the table also, does is raise height. Also, the three seat sofa that you see here is from CB2, but that as well is something that can be customized so it flips to up to provide more I could circulation use a ratchet space. Strap right in front of this bungee cord. I noticed a conspicuous lack of storage in that design. Yeah, minimalism. It's a uh, it's a trend. Don't it's have a things. If you don't have things, you don't have to pick up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and like, if you're living in 200 square feet, why would you have things at all? Yeah, don't have things. No hobbies, no things. Yeah. Um, keep it simple. Every, nobody needs storage. Real well, that's where the bathroom's going to go. So I'm gonna have the bathroom door open from- They gave these designers, I just saw in her drawing, they give these designers 40 feet to work with. You don't get 40 feet. You don't get 40 feet, no matter- what No matter what you do. No. You maybe get 36. Aren't there 44 foot buses? No, that's- MCIs? People, Well, those are at school buses. Oh, okay. so you can get a 45 foot coach, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But like- You're in a school bus, there's a driver's seat. Best case scenario, it's a- rear engine flat front bus and you've got from the driver's seat back like 36 but then at the very back you've got the yeah, there's like the bump up for the engine so yeah <sighs> it's like this tv show is not like factually based inside the bus hallway that way you have more privacy i'm going to make it a oh, minimal a size thing, but shower. it's going to be one giant wet room that. i'm just yeah. imagining maybe like me you still have to work but you can be a remote worker a digital yeah. nomad as they call them Amen. so i need you to have a desk Sister. so i'm going to put a fold down Wait, desk here so it's not always in the way in between the seating area and the driver would be the Still kitchen and storage there. area. So that's where you would have your stove top next to your sink. You would have lots of storage for your pantry. Psychedelic stove. I. It's a mirrored cabinet. I. This is wild. Wow. And look at how much soup he has. This guy would be. And those cans are all upside down. And this cabinet was pushed to the rear on the wall, but now it is at the front of the countertop. Man, like. I don't like this design that much, but I have a feeling if I partied with this guy on this bus, it would really, it would be a wild ride. Maybe the sink goes into the cabinet. That's a sink? Yeah, look at the fossil right there. <laughs> There's a faucet. That's oh, a oh, that's a fa. Yeah, the, uh, everything's kind of clear and see-through. It's like SpongeBob where everything's grown. It is. Sure. Uh items wow. and below that you would have storage for all of your cooking and kitchen equipment well, on the opposite side soup. right you by the door <laughs> you're really creating a sort of entry area kitchen seating group and then a really cool bed moment in the back a then bed, we have storage a, a little moment. shallow I'm additional drawer area or cabinet moment. area for you to be able to house more things I just love the intimacy of a real built-in dining okay. area yeah. so we'll have a round table just in front of this right hand wheel well yes. and then two built-in all right Definitely the favorite. She made a dinette. Yeah, dinette. we love or the dinette. to anything else. Love dinettes. The only thing I would do is not do a round table because a round table up against a wall is pointless. I yeah. would do a like oval, you know, where it's like round on the outside edge, but then it goes, you yeah, because you're just giving up table space for no real reason. In addition to that, her backrests are straight up and down. Ouch. Second fatal flaw. Fatal flaw. The, uh, and, um, the pattern there, it looks like a zoomed in version of a plaid. It's in uniform. Is that, <laughs> is that a zoomed in? I is that my shirt? It could be your shirt it blown up. Nothing. Looks like something out of an old uh, cabin from the. F she's going for this like weird cabin y. I like that she's got window treatments. I like what she's doing. 
Well, well, I'll hang out. Banquettes. And then I want to use this stunning, spectacular Pierre Frey 100% wool flannel. Oh, so they did We're wanting to keep all the material in the bus <laughs> as close to each other as possible. What I'd like to do for the kitchen is actually think about how do we reflect that material into the space. We also want something that's very durable and can take a beating. So what I want to do is actually clad the cap. He's got durable fabric, but yet he's got like this like three inch long shag. <laughs> <laughs> that you can never clean. In the bed. You, there's no cleaning that. You clean it, it'll get all, like, crappy, and there's... I don't, think you, I don't think you can clean it. No. no. You just add and add and add, and then you get rid of it. Yeah. Not durable. But I like where your head's at. You definitely need durable fabric. I want to... I want to hang out with this guy. I want to know what he's like really like. Tree in the kitchen area in a stainless steel. But I want to do something that is actually super reflective, mm -hmm. almost like a mirror polish, which would look something sort of like this. And then I would carry that back into the rest of the space by the seating. So we're really thinking about materiality here, more or less in the same color family. Like, I think about materiality too, okay? You know what I'm saying? I think we're all thinking about it, dude. You know, man? The weird thing about this bus is it seems like uh, an after hours like uh, private party room with a shower in the back, like in a bunch of Campbell's soup. It's a rock star bus. Is that what rock stars do? They just they take showers and eat soup. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna be. I'm just ca I'm it. getting confused. You know, we got a whole bus, and so far all I can do is hang out, eat soup, and take a shower. Honestly, I'm not upset about that. <laughs> And all the cabinetry is round and curved and like, shoot, that's a lot of very good craftsmanship going into that. It's not easy to build curved cabinets, curved benches, oh, yeah. those cushions. You know how hard that would be to sew? If I'm in this bus, I respect it. Okay. That's a lot of time. Okay. All right. All right. So being very simple, keeps everything very tonal, <laughs> and just really makes the eye Look at those expand. Those are we're gonna have the kitchen on the side, and I'm envisioning that in like a very wild, like eggplant aubergine stained wood. Holy so one of the natural. things that I like to do, and I'm just borrowing from traditional like cabinetry design, is cutouts, heart cutouts, little diamond floral this shapes that are like, like sort of clover four point things. I'm just gonna cut something. all of this out of a lot of You're the cabinet things out? to ventilate them. So in the kitchen, You're we're gonna have cabinet. all of the essential. We'll have a perfectly big enough sink. And we're going to have like an 18 inch dishwasher because you can hook up enough water in your tank underneath the bus to be able to run a dishwasher once in a while. Interesting point there. Like dishwashers do use a lot less water than washing dishes by hand. If I'm you've got a look. that. Because they recycle the wash water for the whole time and then they just rinse it instead of like leaving the sink running or whatever. Yeah, but I don't know how you would accurately get that data because everyone washes dishes very differently. Well, yeah. So, I'm not believing it yet. Well, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm just presenting information. Uh, this reminds me a lot of, um, like, an old cabin that was maybe built in, like, the 50s. I think that, you know? so she, if I remember correctly in the beginning, she said that she had built or designed a bus once before. And it's very apparent with her choices and her thoughts. She's process. thought about it, yeah. Um, I think she is also used to repurposing stuff because it looks like maybe two different cabinets getting repurposed and put in there. Um, the old flannel material, definitely something I've seen on a lot of older couches. And you're right, it looks like a 50s design. So like, Doesn't maybe, it kind of? Maybe it's a, you know, reclaimed bus. Like so. if if you imagine like, not the Airstreams, but like the other campers of like the 50s or camper like, 60s, you know, the way those interiors look like this. Similar. Yeah, not as much white. This would be like dark stained wood. Yeah. The thing that's interesting to me are these toe kicks because like that's just going to get filled with junk, like yeah. dirt and stuff. How yeah, you, you can't store that? stuff in there because of the decorative feature and it's stuff. How do you ever clean dirt in here? And... Yeah. You ever have a dog, you know? And then we'll have like the little cooktop oven. Let's utilize the sort of Where space the above cooktop? the windows at the kitchen area for a little shelf that has a rail all the way across for things like soy sauce and ketchup and mustard, you know, like your regular I condiments. And then like everything else is storage and trash. Like I actually think it's important for you to make room inside of a schoolie for trash. That's that's the number one thing people forget. I'm fuck I'm I'm on to that. Yeah, she's, she's she's definitely had a ring before. She's thought about it because people never design a spot for trash and it's so unsexy, but like you're going to make trash. And you, if you don't have a place for it, you're going to have like a trash can just sitting outside 
your beautiful cabinets that were thoughtfully made and then just like a trash can. Yeah. Like bungee corded with eye it's hooks. Garbage. It's garbage. It's eye hooks. Trash cans don't have to be They're garbage. Holding place with hooks. It'll be cute. <laughs> I like this. She's the most thoughtful one, I think. Mm, oh, definitely. You get the award for most so the thoughtful. one that is against the bathroom, let's have that one be the trash bin. Okay. The other really important thing is the hardware. One of the things that bugs me all the time is school buses where I see the conversion and like everything rattles around and is crazy. So instead of using like regular cabinet She's hinges. She's got opinions. I love her. She's got opinions about buses. It's true though. Everyone makes their buses and they're a mobile thing and that should be the the first thing you're thinking about when building everything. However, it's so I easy to forget so though. So many schoolies that just have like shelves or like free floating furniture and like stuff cluttered everywhere and like plants sitting. Yeah. And how do you drive with all that stuff around? It's gonna fall down. Well, not everybody and, like, knows how to drive. Cabinets. <laughs> not everyone knows how to drive. <laughs> Um, and like cabinets, like you need a secure way to keep them shut and people don't do that. And then they have all these child latches that don't work. They rip off. Um, the adhesive doesn't work. It drives me nuts. It drives you nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we have a place. Well, I feel like she, these are the things you think about if you actually imagine doing it for yourself. Or if you've actually had one. Or had one. Why? Yeah. We should, we should, uh, Rig. we should Google these people everything has to lock so this everything is kind of how i would do it so this hardware oh, is from classic. rejuvenation these are classic i think yeah. it's very important for you to have a lounging area inside the schoolie so the couch yeah. we're going to have like this pierre frey Whoa. fabric which is one of my personal favorites it's actually called country which almost feels too good to be true and then we're going to do in this like wild green leather that backrest was angled i like that oh yeah but her but her uh little Dinette in the in the back was straight up. Yeah, those are straight up down. Interesting. Well, you don't want to fall asleep when you're eating, I guess. Yeah. Can't be too comfortable there. A bolster right at the back because sometimes you just want to nap, right? And then underneath the couch, <laughs> like I want pillows. to put built-in coffee tables. So if well, you ever seen this, this thing, there is actually a motorized or mechanical lift up KitchenAid stand mixer hardware thing that you can put inside of a cabinet. So I actually am gonna utilize that mechanism and that engineering for underneath the sofa. So you can actually pull out one of these pieces or two of them if you wanted to serve as a coffee table that's just built into the couch. Again, everything has to be built I in because really anything that wiggles around that. or it's loose yeah. is just gonna go sloshing itself around your- Yeah, I know those mechanism mechanisms she's talking about because my mom's installed those in kitchens. And for a mixer or something? Yeah, for like um, the kitchen. They they're so work? heavy. And they basically just like the KitchenAid looks like it's sitting in your cabinet and then it comes up and out. And so you never have to move it by hand. Um, yeah. Those are heavy. And if you were to do that, I don't know where your legs would go from the couch. So you'd have to be sitting like up on the couch completely in order to use that. Because so, the mechanism takes up the space where your legs would go? Yeah, it's like coming it comes from under. right here. So Yeah, so the mechanism has to be like near right lap. Here. Yeah, no. so your legs couldn't be there. So I like the thought. I don't think it would actually work. Yeah. There's no good design for the couch that turns into the coffee table and the dining table yet. It really is hard. It's like... I like the backrest. These are problems we've so had for centuries. You know, yeah, yeah. and since definitely not just in schoolies, but you know, compact specifically out. in schoolies. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, you know, I mean, if there was some amazing uh, solution, maybe it'll come out next year. Yeah, and maybe AI will figure it out for us. <laughs> damage all of your hard work. So then across from the couch, I'm gonna hide oh, a I roll up TV. About. There are these Whoa. literal TV up and down motors. I actually personally like have that. one. And I'm going to hide the TV inside of this cabinet. And then in front of it, you have shallow room for additional storage. Now for the lighting. I really love sconces in a schoolie I like personally. Sconces. I want there to be plenty of light because a lot of times when you're going around in the winter, it's actually dark 
in the bus by like 4 p.m., right? So ONG Studio makes some of the most charming, beautiful, perfect match between like folks, cabiny, traditional and very modern contemporary, wooden and so glass light like fixtures. So I want those sconces styles. everywhere and they'll mostly be the single bulb oh, except these. over the kitchen where we'll do a double these look like sconce. The old we have a like three seat campus. sofa flanked you know? by two side tables with lighting and we have sconces on these three quarter high storage units. We have a continuous beam of light running from the back <laughs> of the bus to the front and that would connect the skylight all the way to the front. It could be bright, you know, but it could also be turned down very, very dim. And oh, I think it could really actually like. be something that's very um, calming in a space that is otherwise pretty energetic. I'm just going to say no because overhead light is your only light source is never calming. Especially pointing straight down. If it yeah. like at least had something over it and pointed out to the side, it'd no be better, way. but... This is like a bad trip lighting situation. Yeah. I used to like mainly do the puck lights on the top and I don't even like that anymore. There's such a bummer. Tax, uh, task lighting and like spot focus lighting on zones is so much better. I think the overhead is good to have, but you need those sconces. It's only good if you're cleaning. <laughs> or reading or trying to, you know, wake up. In Get the a tan off your LEDs. Mm -hmm. That's, it's insane to me actually to only have one over, like this, his design with all the reflective surfaces in particular it would be so cool if he had like under cabinet, like toe oh, kick yeah. lighting, you know? Give me some like, little lights under the cabinet. How about some toe kicks? How about some, you know? I want to see LEDs like in his windows because it, it only yeah. looks like they're in there already. That would be sick. This dude got crazy and then like quit. Can we do that? Can we do that with us? <laughs> Can we do LEDs like in the windows? And window? then on top of that, you would also have storage for clothing. Everyone's going to have odds and ends. So Everyone's why not have a little have decorative lamp on top? Oh, lamp. Of okay. course, the lamp would be That's fully okay. affixed to the surface so it wouldn't move in case you know you had a little bump in the road you would screw the lamp down decor By the seating you would have the bed covered in the fur you would have the base of the seating also covered in the fur and then the underneath fur. that would be velvet <laughs> in the same color so we're really Wait, thinking about materiality here it makes it feel like you're inside of a music video it makes it feel like you're inside of this tunnel that's like that uh, jumeric music video virtual insanity virtual that's traveling through time. How cool is that? How cool is that? I'm feeling really good about all of the material choices that I've made for my schoolie, but I still want there to be an additional decorative folksy element that just like really brings this whole schoolie bus to life. So I want to just hand paint, stencil, folk art all over the place. I could see it going all the way around all of the skylights and really framing each beautiful round skylight. Okay, she totally has experience. She got a new uh, driver's seat. You see that just pop into there? That purple driver's seat? Yeah. Yeah. Brand new. I bet you guys lumbar support. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had something to say about her hand stenciled folk art. No, it's cute. No. I'm more interested in that chair that just magically appeared. Gosh, even even when we're here to just critique design elements, we can't get out of our functional brains. Wow. Okay, but that chair. This, no, I mean... <laughs> I'm stoked on the Probably chair too. too. And honestly, I mean, a not, heated chair with lumbar support. I, I don't. I've got one. Yeah, I just spent like 20 hours in one. Thank you, Brianna installed the heating pad in my chair. It's crucial. That's really cool. That really cool. <laughs> honestly, it makes a big difference. But I think it is interesting because the things that I get most fired up about in terms of building the things where I feel like I really want to convince other people that what I'm doing is best is on the stuff behind the walls. Yeah. The and it's, yeah, it's not like, it's like if you want to do the stencil thing, like, or do any type of design, you should like, that's the fun part, yeah. you know, like make your bus your own. Yeah, totally. And so it's fun to watch these designers. It's, it's, I think it's interesting just to like the one I like the most, which is this one. Uh, also appears to be the one who's considered the more, it's not like scientific, what, like building science or what would you call just her method, the way that she's thinking about the project? She's thinking know? about function. Um, yeah. But I like lean into in a more the, typical way, you know? Looking at this bus overall, definitely not my style. I don't oh, yeah. I aren't cute. But yeah. it's functional and yeah. she's considering the real life aspects of it. 
And so, so far, it's... If I was going to pick one to live in right now. Yeah. This one. I want the one with window treatments, with... With insulation. Yeah, with insulation, window treatments, and Mm -hmm. actual cabinets, the shower (laughs) semi-private. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm in a nightclub. Yeah. (laughs) I want to do it on the side of the TV cabinet. At the rear wall, we'll find an art piece because it's nice, you know, to have a yeah. focal point instead of just a blank wall. This boss hasn't gotten a lot of screen time yet. Um, Good call. I. She also got a new um, driver's seat. Oh, look at that. Hello. That one looks more pricey. That does look a little more pricey. Probably have not only the heated seat, the lumbar support, but also could have the massage feature. I hope they all have armrests. God, I might pick buses based on the seat. Um, you need a seat that has a built-in booster chair. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> what good is a heated seat if your butt's six inches off of it? Yeah, they put a trash can on oh, the drive. Brianna drove 500 miles with a trash can for her backrest because... The seat wouldn't go forward far enough. Not all seats are made for short people. Yeah. You know. Uh, I'm not even that short. You're, no. But, uh, You're above five feet. Yeah, I'm above five feet. Uh, this bus, though, I was going to say, it kind of gives me the vibe of like a doctor's office. Mm. Um, it doesn't seem homey. Like a waiting room? Yeah, it looks like a waiting room. It doesn't seem homey. Like I'm, I'm at least would like to see some magazines that are interesting on that coffee table. Yeah, where's so your mags? While I'm waiting. Here's, can I ask you a question? Me? Jeez, you're the only one. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm feeling like the proportions are weird because like we have a whole chair existing before the bottom of a school bus window. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like this bed, usually a bed is going to be like 10 inches or so, maybe at least off the ground. And then like another 10 inch mattress. But somehow, miraculously, we have this bed happening here, and then we have what appears to be like another six feet at least above it, which would mean this bus has eight eight foot high ceilings. So, um, what's happening cut- to my eyes right now? I-, I can explain all this to you. Thank it, you. They obviously cut the footage weird, but they skipped over and this bus did a roof raise under the windows <laughs> um, and put new windows the back. The previous girl with the cool necklace did a roof raise above the windows because her sconces sit on a flat wall that oh. extends about three feet. So everyone got a roof raise. Everyone got a roof raise in a different weird location. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. It just never. All mentioned. right. That's the only plausible explanation there, though. Because that, like, I was like, why does this? There's no way if you. If you've been inside a stock school bus, like just put your put your body in there right now with me. meditation. Now picture a chair in there. That chair is going to take up way more space than this chair does. Like, the, how no. is that chair not even coming half? It's like halfway up to the, the bottom of the window is about 30 inches. So that means that the top of that chair is 15 inches high. I'm curious as to when this is filmed because. What you mean? This is like seven inches off the ground. I've had 3D renderings done for builds um, to like show people what their bus is going to look like. And they're accurate and down to the inch. And you can add furniture in there that's all pre-sized. So the fact that this is all very non-proportional is seeming like maybe this was filmed in like 2005 before, you know, technology was really there. I don't think it's that old. I think it's just that maybe that sloppy. Mm, It was very quickly produced. Yeah, and if you look, like, the gap, the flat space between the top of the window and the roof, like, that's usually, I think, more than that. I think that's usually more, like, maybe down here. Well, it depends on, like, are you talking about a Collins, a Bluebird, or a Tiger? Well, okay. Elder, Bluebird, newer Bluebird. I think we can agree the proportions do not seem to match a stock school bus, though. No way. No way. Lots of metal fab. Get out of here. <laughs> and the art need not be expensive. It just has to be a piece that you absolutely love. The yeah. secondary purpose of the art wall is to create a barrier that hides the bathroom Wait, and the kitchen app space. Because I really didn't there. want you to have to look into the drudgeries when you're looking down that corridor. So it creates a nice line of demarcation yeah, between the utilitarian spaces and the living spaces. What? Hold on. Did she do a whole rear end extension? Yeah, because there was only, remember, you counted, there was like three windows from the yeah, Wilbur's back. You could fit a bed back there. I'm, I, 
I feel a little bit duped because she was like, that's the back wall. The art wall. Oh, it's actually not just an art wall. There's a whole other room behind there, the kitchenette. Maybe the kitchenette is outside and it's a grill behind your bus. Her. You know. Totally. She seems like a big tailgater. (laughs) Final foe. Stemming from the original view, which was this heaviness, this oh, dark, so dank bus meant to roll to the final garage of his life. Clearly not a bus person, because I look at that and I'm like, that looks like fun. Strap a couch to the wall, put a rug down, diesel heater in a cooler, let's go. Throw a nature's head, or you you like a different kind, but I like the sun Mars. put a place to poop in there, you know? You're thinking about all this and all I can see is how that back wall has been inverted. It's just like they took a picture of painted. You know, here's a question for you. Looking at the shape of that back wall, can you tell what uh, what mo- what make of bus that is from? Because I can. You can. And I bet you can too. It's, be- it's a bluebird. Me too. Yeah. Do you know why would you say that? Because I have my reasons. Because of the way that it is. <laughs> Spe- specifically, I'll tell you why I would pick it. Because bluebirds always have this indentation right here instead of just a flat panel. And I know you've noticed that too. Yeah. On the front and the back, they have this little indent. That Can we have like some kind of a bus recognition competition? Because that would be fun. Like s- people like, show us like this much of a bus. Yeah, like I mean, we have a buzzer identify. and identify it. I bet I could. I bet I could identify some things. I bet I could identify some things too. Lifetime, breathing new energy and life into it is a that. bus that I would definitely want to roll so, into town on because it's got. Yeah, because look at that. Look chair at that chair. Oh, it does it. have armrests. Holy crap. That's nice. I've never seen that nice of a chair in a bus. That looks like a Star Trek Enterprise kind of chair, you know what I'm That's saying? That's like three grand at least. It's got the massage in there. Mm hmm newness to it it's got some edge to it it's got some light to it how long and do you think they had to live life with hit the road mama i think that any musician yeah. would love this any bus musician. whether it's a pop diva or an r&b superstar or if it's a 1990s tlc crazy sexy cool whatever it might if you're like a lo-fi indie ambient artist who's also a straight edge i don't know if you like this bus yeah what if you're like tom DeLonge though does that look like a pretty bike out of to you? World. Or like... I couldn't tell what that looks like. There's a... And is it like that on this side too? It's reminding me of like some kind of candy that I don't like. Candy? I'm thinking of humans. Hmm. Interesting. Like a Maybe they would love this bus. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about think how can, can this space this transport bus. someone from in everyday world into their own environment. And I would love to spend a night here. Do you think she eats a lot of soup? Overall, I feel absolutely personally in love with and very invested in this schoolie. It is everything that I wanted personally and practically. The opportunity to design little spaces, especially- I just want to point out all of these designs have like very little storage. Hers has the most, but like they all have Almost no storage. Like well, no, she's got storage under the bed. It lifts up the stairs under yeah. the dinette, With, the like, couch. There's no uppers. No uppers. No uppers anywhere. And there's like this huge gap here between this and the bed. What's going on there? Yeah. Keep in mind, they had four. They were given forty feet of living area. It's not a forty foot bus. It's more like a thirty foot bus. That gap is her work desk, which she made just a single floating shelf. Yeah. I and know. a stool. There's no outlets to plug in her computer. There's no place. There are no outlets. Um, there's no outlets anywhere in this bus. There's no, I mean, no batteries. Where is mini I don't see solar panels. I don't see a heating system. You know. What is this, 1970? <laughs> Hopefully there's somewhere. In Can you ever see like, lamps? <laughs> you know what's funny, though? Like, this is a quick aside. Like, I've got a book of, like, schoolie conversions from the 70s and 80s. People were living in those just happy as heck. And they had no solar panels. They had, like, a couple lead-acid batteries for, like, a few things. Mm-hmm. They had, like, kerosene lamps, propane stove, wood stove for heat, uh, propane water heater. And, like, they were fine, you know? And they didn't spend 15 grand on a solar system. 
you know? And sometimes when I'm looking at that, I think to myself, is it stupid, you know, to be doing like, is this what we need? The whole point is to get to what's important, you know? I think that's why before you start your build, you got to figure out what you want because it's truly a pick your own adventure. Yeah. You can go yes. super muji and you can spend $100,000 easy on materials on your build. Yeah. Or you can get a bus, gut it, put a futon and a diesel heater in there and the just freedom. drive. Yeah. And not worry if you're breaking things because you only spent four thousand dollars on the entire thing, including the bus. Always just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild how different it can be. It is. So if I, you're happy, don't <laughs> let people judge you because it yeah. does literally whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As we're judging a video. Well, we're but you know, but we're judging a video. It's honestly not about even how much they're spending though. You know, like we're really judging them on like would these actually be nice to live in? Which I think is yeah. fair. Because that's not how much, you don't need to spend a lot of money for it. To be I nice. would definitely party in the Rockstar rig. Uh, yeah. But, but I want to come sleep in this one. Yeah, like, can It'll you imagine the other one. waking up in the Rockstar one in the morning and being like, where am I? You know? <laughs> oh my God. It's I'm just like, like not a chill, that's not where I'd want to wake up. It no. doesn't feel warm or inviting to me. No, this one seems nice. Let's see what we got. Especially little spaces that move around to make it deeply functional, storage first, very much mindful of the actual things that you need to bring with you on she the road. She has the best approach. But still like beautiful. Oh, round table. Wow! Wow! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> what we got going here? Look at yours! Wow. This is a cool view because the one in the middle actually looks like a bus. Like a schoolie to me. Yeah, the one and, in the middle totally looks like a schoolie. Like, if I saw that on Instagram, I'd be like, ah, cool. I would also be like, where's your storage? <laughs> I've seen ones like the one on the left um, all the time. People make limousine buses, party yeah, buses. Yeah, yeah, totally. It looks like a party bus. The one on the right is actually probably the one that I feel like I've never seen. That massive skylight and the kind of waiting room feeling. Yeah, I'm really curious as to how she had that skylight completely flat. Um, and I don't see a curvature of the roof at all before, or like after the skylight. It's just, you know, it's an engineering marble. Well, yeah, architects can do that. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh my, this is giving like the best of NSYNC. Yeah, or wow. like TLC maybe. Oh. Yes, you know. a definitely yes. Missy Misdemeanor Elliot. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know. I think more music. of like a Nanda Vigo style, so everything's kind of like all the same finish more or yeah, less. Yeah, right. Feel Could you, bigger. I also want to say as a builder, building his style of bus would be incredibly hard because all those very glossy uniform uh, finishes, like you, that would be the hardest of all of these to build. Yeah, it's a, if I was incredibly in bus, demanding. I would, I would not care if I liked it or not. I would have so much respect for it. Yeah. If it came to fruition. That is like so hard to build. I don't even know, like, I don't know how you would build those. A lot of those you'd have to build out of like molds and like I don't I don't even know. It's like plastic stuff. Yeah. It's like an airplane. That's wild. So I'm not gonna like it's like a bonus point to him, but it is a note of saying like to pull that off would be really impressive. Earlier you mentioned that you would like to hang out with him and see what he's actually like. Yeah. I would too, because this guy's gotta be fun. The soup yeah. is in this picture. The soup is funny to me. I think I'd be best friends with this guy. Okay. Really? Less cacophonous. He's also just kind of running with it. Mine is a wow. cuckoo schoolie. It's inspired by cuckoo clocks. She's cute though. Thanks. I went very I've practical. Got a so clock. I've actually like designed a school bus for exactly this purpose. I've done a schoolie before. So I went very practical. My whole thing centers very much about storage and versatility of mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I just was like, I really am in a folk art season. Oh, I love. Keep it serene. It's got an art piece so back there. there. You gotta have some art, mm -hmm. you know, good quality art. You gotta make it your home that you could enjoy. Like it's, you know, just yeah. because you're on the road doesn't mean you have to reduce your quality of living. Thank you. That is you very, know. very Thank true. You. Keep the living alive. I know. <laughs> I felt, I, so I kind of wanted to know more about her thing because she had that whole wall hiding a kitchen. That yeah. was like a yeah, surprise. We never even saw. They didn't give her any screen time. Oh, man. Well, okay. I mean, I think I know where you stand, but if you were going to pick one of those buses to live in, which one would you pick? Oh, well, definitely um, the schooly one, yeah, the actual version, yeah. No. 
Um, that was also, I think, the only one that was realistic. Yeah, I agree. I appreciate the design elements of all of them, more so the first one than the last one. Just because I feel slighted because we don't know. Yeah, we didn't get to see the last one. What's the deal with her for? Yeah. That was a bummer, but it's kind of interesting. to watch. Honestly, it's fun to watch that for the first time with you and with you because uh, I had no idea what to expect. And it's amazing to watch people who have clearly never done a schoolie, never really thought about the problems uh -huh. with someone who actually has. Yeah. And see her, her approach was way more function oriented than the other two. Like not even close. Yeah. Gator. She was like, she talked about insulation. Yeah, she knew the task at hand, and the other people were just like, we're gonna design a cool, unique space. Not necessarily a space to live in, not one that's possible. <laughs> to, to build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt like the only one of those three that I could have built was hers. Because there's no way I could do, well, not no way, but like to build that skylight would really be a feat. Because that was like a freaking five foot by yeah, raise the roof. Well, foot span of plexiglass. Like, no. how thick does that have to be? That's got to be like an inch thick. Yeah, could you specify plexiglass? So. Yeah. And then the other one with the crazy windows and then the like bubbly wall forms. Yeah, that's all wild. You know what would be really hydrogen. fun is to get three groups of builders and pull a build out of a hat so like they don't get to choose which build they're going to do and have them try and build those buses. Oh my god. Yeah, that would be interesting. I, I would be really bummed <laughs> if I got anyone but the middle one. I, wanna, I don't know how I would do that. I think I'd want to get an impossible build. But how would you do the one on the left? The bubble wall? Yeah. So they make skylights that are bubbles like that. And I think I would take that and try and put like a vehicle wrap on them, like a translucent vehicle wrap on the skylights. Okay. Mount those to the walls um, and mount one of them to a cabinet push open hinge situation yeah, okay. with a bunch of soup in there um and so that might be the most expensive part of the build <laughs> is going and buying all that the thing. soup wasn't soup's not a buck a can anymore you know like probably like three bucks a can like four bucks a can okay. so. well on that note um that was that was me and brianna reacting very really to um three interior designers converting the same school bus which was not a real school bus. We know that was that it was, was AI. That was a make -book. The whole video was AI. <laughs> we're AI, but that was actually pretty. I fun. knew you were AI. You're AI. Yeah, you've wondered about that for a long time. I didn't knew it. Um, but hopefully that was entertaining. I had a good time. I think we both had a good time. Um, I'm Chuck Cassidy. We're Rihanna. And thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next week.